Ugandan scientists are worried that the country could be faced with new Omicron variants. The scientists are now investigating whether some of the new deaths in the country are being caused by new variants such as uh, BA4 and BA5. Hilary Ayesiga is our correspondent in Uganda. Ugandan scientists are gathering more data to ascertain whether the BA4 and BA5 Omicron variants have spread into the country. They are concerned the current resistance to immunity could be from the new Omicron variants. We still know that uh, Omicron is highly transmissible. We also know that although the infection may not be as severe as Delta, but we do have cases of people dying of the Omicron variant. According to Uganda's health minister, Rutha Ching, the country loses one person every week to older versions of Omicron variants. The new variants are known to be causing fresh spikes in COVID-19 infections in countries such as South Africa. Scientists are now encouraging locals to vaccinate in order to protect themselves from the effects of the new COVID-19 strains. I want to caution Ugandans that we are not yet out of the woods. And the outbreak of, uh, well, the continuity of the pandemic, uh, the large numbers that you see in countries that are not very far because we are interconnected, can actually come back. It can spill over to Uganda. Latest figures from the Ministry of Health show close to 17 million Ugandans have been vaccinated. Local scientists argue that to effectively control the pandemic, and minimize the impact of future resurgency, the country should vaccinate at least 70% of its population. Hilara Yesga, ACBC News, Kampala, Uganda. Well, let's uh, speak now to Professor uh, Pontiano Kalibu, who is the director of the Uganda Virus Research Institute. And uh, let's find out what his thoughts are about uh, this story. Thank you so much indeed for joining us. Um, you're the director of the Virus Institute. Um, is this something that you've been aware of, uh, this news that uh, an investigation into new variants in Uganda? What I know is that um, we, our, our institute has been providing most of the data on the variants in the country. And in the past one or two months, our testing has been quite low because the cases have been quite low and we have not been doing as much as we did uh, maybe three or four months ago. Our last, the data we have, at least samples collected at the beginning of the year, January, February, March, indicate to us that we have Omicron, yes, but we have not yet detected the BA4 and 5. Our Omicron uh, variants we have are mostly the BA, the one uh, and its sublineages, and occasionally few cases where we've seen the BA2. I'm not aware of uh, uh, the identification of the uh, BA4 and 5, but we are looking around. But the cases, as you know, are very, very low now. Uh, yesterday, there was no case reported. Uh, so uh, our, even our surveillance has, uh, has been down, but we want to revamp it. So I'm not aware of uh, the BF4 and 5, but we are on the lookout. We have Omicron, but it's mostly uh, our data shows the BA1 uh, sub and its sublineages and the BA2. Where could these reports be coming from then? I mean, they talk about Ugandan scientists. Uh, well, I, I need to check to, to look more, uh, but also this information is news to me. Uh, mm. We may, you may find, as I said, the cases are now low and down. Uh, our efforts and they bring together all the scientists and all the data has not been as we used to do before. I will need to check. But um, to my knowledge, I'm not aware of um, a reporting of the BA4 and BA5. I'm aware of our data. Um, but the samples we have, uh, the most recent sequenced uh, samples, are a little bit old. They are February. Uh, and, and much. There could be uh, colleagues who have more recent, but I'm not aware of that. All right. So um, how is how are the testing levels? Are you happy that whilst uh, you're reporting 
uh, very few cases, is that a sign that not a lot of people are infected or it's just that uh, you're not testing as much as before? I think not many uh, people are, are, are really uh, falling sick because even when you look at the test you do, if you do the testing and people are walking in or traveling, the positivity rates are very, very low. Yeah, very, very low. We started getting less than 1%. Now they are much, much, much down. So I think it's a, tr a fact that the infection rates are down. The testing may be low, but even among those who are tested, those who are positive are very, very few. So indeed, we are at the, uh, at the low uh, uh, peak of our uh, infections. We're quite down, uh, very low infections. But as the minister said, we should not relax. Uh, as we know this uh, uh, pandemic, we have had waves down and up. So we need uh, to be vigilant. All right, so um, you've got Omicron um, and it sounds as if it's just a few cases. So you're not overly concerned at this stage, even if your data is not very current. I think I'm not so, uh, we need to check. And this is not only Uganda. Globally, I've been following the sequencing rates have come down. And WHO is saying, let's not relax, let's continue sequencing. The sequencing rates are down. Even the sequences in the global database for BA and B4, they are very few, not many. So we should not relax, we should test. But what at least uh, uh, makes us a, a little bit less uh, worried is that the infection rates are low. Uh, in hospitals, we don't have cases. We have not had death for many, uh, many weeks. The average uh, number of cases in, uh, in a week could be around five. So the uh, pandemic is still uh, now down, but we should be <laughs> always on the lookout. Mm. So I, I, I must say, I've been telling my colleagues, even this week, that, that let's go out. Uh, look, if you we find cases in hospitals and health centers, even those who are working, let's collect the samples so that we are on mm. the watch we continue the surveillance, but indeed this, our surveillance um, has really uh, gone down. But we are happy that the cases are down. Do you have enough resources to do enough sequencing uh, to make sure that you will catch these variants as they come through? I think that's a very important question, the resources. Uh, we get resources from different uh, sources. Uh, uh, local and international. Uh, recently, we didn't have enough. We are appealing and uh, we managed to get uh, supplies. Uh, we have hot, got supplies from WHO, uh, from the Global Fund. Uh, we have some funding from the Wellcome Trust MRC, from the CDC. Uh, so we are from different sources. But indeed, uh, resources for sequencing are not enough. Uh, but for now, I cannot say the reason we're not doing all the sequencing is because of resources. It's mostly because the cases have come down and I think uh, we have not been as vigilant. We need to revamp this. All right, so um, what are the kind of restriction levels that uh, your country has in place? Is it still uh, very much masks in public, that kind of thing, or have there been uh, a relaxing of restrictions as we've seen in many countries uh, across the continent now? I think the government, we're still saying, use the masks. Mm. <laughs> uh, distancing, sanitation, and all, that, uh, 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 and all that. But when the infection rates are down, the public also reacts the same. So not many people are putting on masks. They are putting their masks in their pockets. And depending on where you go, if you find people putting on masks, you pull it out. If they don't, mm. you keep it in the pocket. So I think uh, the masking and all that has come down because I think they see few cases. There has been relaxation at the airports. Uh, now, uh, PCR testing is not a requirement uh, to, as you travel in or going out. It all depends on the airline and where you're going. So indeed, there has been some relaxation. Mm. Uh, uh, in the public. The government has also relaxed a bit, but also the public has relaxed. 
So I think you have as many as 10 million people that have been fully vaccinated, but it seems that the booster shots, people are really slow at getting them. Uh, why is that? Is there a feeling, and we're seeing it across the continent, where a lot of people think that the worst is over? Partly that could be. Uh, people are encouraged to go for vaccination and boosting, uh, but I think there's also that that relaxation is there. Yeah. But of course, we need also on our part as the uh, government and the health workers to ensure that the vaccines reach the population that require them. So we need to do that again. But that relaxation is there. I've been asking colleagues, some have been vaccinated. They don't uh, so much take concern about the boosting. They think the two doses are enough. So we need to do more education, more campaign, but also provide the vaccines so that they're accessible. As you know, people mm. don't want to travel long distances for vaccination. We need to move them nearer to the people, but also continue with the message. For instance, if we get new variants, the boosting becomes very, very important so that we can cover as many of these variants. Uh, that are, are, are coming up. All right. So uh, uh, from where you're sitting, from your perspective, the COVID story in Uganda is under control, but uh, one needs to remain cautious. Exactly. Exactly. We need to remain cautious. Yes. All right. Thank you so, so much. That's where we're going to leave it. Thanks for uh, giving us uh, your uh, reflections on the situation in Uganda. Thank you for your time. Thank you for hosting me.